Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to yet another one of these sad programs that we do here on the channel occasionally and sometimes a little more than occasionally where we talk about a uh, a musical legend that has left us. And uh, tonight's another one, the second one tonight. We talked about Kim Simmons a little while ago. I've got Ken Golden here from uh, Laser's Edge, star of In the Prog Seat. Uh, we're talking about uh, the late Manuel Gotching from Ashra Temple and Cosmic Jokers and lots of solo stuff. Uh, one of the mainstays of the kraut rock scene who passed away on December 4th, which is actually, uh, you know, about 10 or so, 10, 11 days ago, but uh, they didn't report it till real recently uh, at the age of 70. So uh, Ken, welcome to the show. Uh, Ken, Ken, as soon as he heard the news, he's like, we got to do a tribute to Manuel. And uh, I was away on a business trip. So I said to Ken, he said, as soon as I get back, we'll, we'll cook this one up. And, uh, 70 little young for some. yeah and they didn't they haven't they haven't said what he passed away from yeah just said that he's you know surrounded by family so and he gave an interview in november so i have a feeling it must have been something sudden something pretty sudden yeah yeah i'm, I'm sure we'll find out eventually yeah yeah eventually well it took so long for the news of his death to come out so now you it figures that uh the actual cause of death will probably be delayed as well so um of course, uh, he burst on the scene uh, way back. Let's see, the first Ashra Temple album was 1971, and uh, a mind blower of an album, right? Um, yeah, I was, you know, for me, I mean, yeah, Manuel go dying. I mean, this made a big impact on me. I mean, he was when I first was getting into progressive rock, I didn't know what an Ashra Temple was. Other than it was a line item in the gem in the gem catalog that I had, so and I picked up a used copy of this, the first Ashra Temple album. I remember it was an Italian pressing on PDU, and uh, I picked it up at the music box in Queens for a dollar seventy five. And dead. I took it home, and I played it at forty five RPM by accident. And I said, "Oh my God, I've never heard anybody play like this in my life." <laughs> and then I played it at the right speed, and I'm like. It still sounds pretty damn good. It's pretty good, <laughs> yeah. I can play, you know. So uh, yeah, that first album, I don't know if that's so much <laughs> prog rock. It's just like it's like this intense psychedelic rock and like pure psychedelic like, energy. Yeah. yeah, like power trio rock, right? Because I mean, it's it's just guitar solos, especially like the first half. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's two side long pieces. Yep. So the first side is that's the real high energy piece, and and and. You should, we should mention that the trio of Ashura Temple, the original lineup, was uh, Manuel Gotchin guitar, Hartman Unk was the bass player, and Klaus Schultz had quit Tangerine Dream, and he was a drummer. And he came over, he was the drummer in Ashura Temple on the first album. And so you have two side long pieces. The first side is this very high energy piece, which is Ambas. And side two, the 25 minute Tron machine, is actually like the exact opposite. It's very mellow and spacey, very cosmic. Um, yeah, it's one of the, you know, one of the, it's an important album, you know, it's an important album in, in, in the, to the foundation of the kraut rock scene. And, uh, you know, uh, Ashra Temple, it was kind of this evolution. Uh, I don't know, do you want to run through the albums? We could run through. Yeah. Them yeah. If you want. yeah so absolutely. I've got them all here. I, I just said to Peter, I don't know what happened to my copy of Schwingungen. So I've got a, I got a placeholder. This is the new reissue of it, the 50th anniversary. Um, Klaus left and he went off on his solo career and the lineup changed. And this is the, this was uh, Schwingungen, the second album was always the hardest one to find. There was vocal, some vocals on it. Very spacey. Um, it's kind of all over the map. Um, it's uh, many people, for many people, it's their favorite and it's kind of a seminal album. And then, <clears throat> Then they hooked up with Timothy Leary. Timothy cool. Leary, I, so, this is a pretty fucked up album. I mean, <laughs> they, I think Timmy, Timothy Leary, I think he was like hiding out in Switzerland. He was, uh, you know, and um, and they collaborated with him on this album. And this one is just like a total freak out of an album. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of insane. And, uh, not my, it's actually not my favorite, but you know it's, it's definitely important. it's definitely strange and it's an important album you know and uh you know so then so then klaus comes back and 
they made it, the trio again and uh, they did uh, join in and join it. It's, and it's a great album. It kind of goes back to the first album. Uh, Manuel's girlfriend, um, uh, Rosie, uh, Rosie Miller. She, you know, she does some like vocal stuff on it, but solid, solid album. I'm sorry to everybody. I'm too lazy tonight to take these out of the plastic bags. And then, and then he made an album. It was sort of a, a low, kind of one of the low points. It was called, Starring Rosie, where it was Rosie. just Matt, Matt Manuel and his and his girlfriend Rosie and Harold Groskopf from uh, Wallenstein uh, playing drums, and uh, I mean it's okay. I mean there there are parts to it that are okay, um, but then you know Ashra Temple really you know it really was it was him. I mean that you know he was the you know he was he was the whole he was the whole damn show really. And then this was in a very important album, and it was, you know, it's called Inventions for Electric Guitar. And uh, we talk about electronic music, kraut rock. It was released as uh, Ashra Temple Six Manual Gotching. Uh, it's it's just solo electric guitar. Uh, it's it, there's sort of there's sort of like it's him. And a, uh, four, I think it's a four track reel to reel, Pete. I think that's all it is. And he's creating, you know, like doing some loops mm -hmm. and creating rhythm tracks on tape and playing over it. And he's using uh, Echoplex. It's kind of like uh, a little bit like uh, Akim Reichel, Tygoon mm -hmm. Reese. And uh, you, you'll hear sort of influences from Frippinino. This is 1975, if I remember correctly. So it's you know right you know right after it was after No Pussy Footing, and evening and right around the time of uh, Evening Star, uh, and uh, you know hey, feel free to interrupt me if I'm, if I'm babbling a little too much. No, no. I get excited because man, I I love Manuel Gotching, you know. So then then and then Manuel <clears throat> he he started to use sequencers, and that's when he really got into the whole. You know him and Tangerine Dream, and everybody really started to use sequencers. Him and Schultz also, and that really kind of started the whole like Berlin school. Berlin scene, yeah, yeah. And so we had New Age of Earth. You might see it with a different with a different cover. Again, build as Manuel Gotching, Gotching and Ashra Temple, because I guess nobody knew the, who the hell Manuel Gotching was. And uh, there he is with that thumb scarf. He seemed to like that scarf, and. Uh, Again, that's when it gets very heavily sequenced. He's using synthesizers and he's playing over it. And it's a groundbreaking album, you know, it's one of the seminal Berlin School albums. Uh, you know, that's the thing everybody always talks about: Klaus Schultz and and Tangerine Dream. And they were, you know, of course they were, you know, the, the most probably the, the most important figures in that whole thing, the Godfathers, but. Ashra gets forgotten a little bit, yeah. A little bit. He's a little overshadowed, you know, yeah. but be because he was mainly a guitar player, guitar player you know, yeah. you know, where it's like with Tangerine, you know, maybe some at some point, maybe we could do like a, a like a Berlin school show or something like that for Prague Seed or because there's there's so much to talk about in that whole thing. And I, I intentionally avoid it. I know like when we're going through the alphabet and stuff, I'm, I'm always avoiding like Schultz on the S or, you know, I just kind of, to me, that's like a whole other all other thing so then so then um manuel he uh he he got a little commercial he shortened the name from ashra temple down to ashra and he got signed to virgin records here it is with my horrible 6.99 sounds uh, there, yeah. they never they'll never come off they'll never come i learned my lesson one of the great album covers and not such a great album correlations love this album cover <laughs> It's a great album cover. Because, uh, well, what happened, like, Blackouts was kind of cool. The tunes were short, but <clears throat> it's got this great picture of him. A live live shot. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, with the laser. And, um, again, it's 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 very heavily sequenced. The tunes are a little shorter, but he plays some great guitar on here. Uh, car, by the time of Correlations and, and Bell Alliance, this was the, Bell Alliance was the last one he did for Virgin. Um he was starting to get a little into like I hate to use the word disco, but he got a little bit into disco. Well, I mean, it was that time, right? Late. 70s. Yeah, I mean, it was. <laughs> it was that time, mm -hmm. and uh, for all you know, for all we know, maybe they were like his best-selling albums. I I don't know, but uh, you know, so so then 
<clears throat> he made an album which really established him uh, in the music community, a very, very important album called E2, E4. And uh, it's a 58 piece of, it's one piece of music, 58 minutes long, very heavily sequenced um, and with guitar. And it got picked up by the, uh, in the clubs in New York City. And it, it became an important part of the techno scene. It, it actually helped launch the whole techno, the whole techno scene. And uh, yeah, so uh, and then and then, you know, so he he would play as a solo artist, as Manuel Gotching. He, he did put out other solo albums. There were some archival Ashra Temple releases. And then I think it was around 2000. He reconnected with Klaus Schultz and they made some nice albums uh, together. They he resurrected the Ashra Temple. Friendship, album. right? So Friendship. And good. then there was one called Gin Rose and. Yeah, and you know, uh, I got I got lucky enough to see Manuel play. He played in Philly in the church, um, and uh, man, that was Steve Feigenbaum came up from uh, from Maryland. He uh, and the two of us went to see went to see uh, Manuel play. Man, that was it was just an experience. You know, we're in this beautiful old church in the center of uh, University of Pennsylvania, right on the campus there, and there's Manuel. Like he's you know he's it's like space music and then he straps on the guitar and it's like, yeah, it's like, holy shit. You know, it was, uh, it was great stuff. So, and he did, uh, he worked on those cosmic jokers. Uh, albums. Yeah. So the whole cosmic, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's like a whole craziness. The cosmic, jo the, that was Scott Ralph who Kaiser started a record label. He had two labels. He had or and pills pills was supposed to be like the folky label. And or was the, uh, was like the space rock, you know, the space label and Cosmic Jokers was basically a jam session where he got all the guys from the, the different bands on the label. And they all, everybody dropped acid and he recorded the whole thing. And it's, you know, he put out a series of albums, the Cosmic Jokers uh, um, and the Galactic Supermarket. And there was Planet and Sit-In, Sci-Fi Party, uh, Gilly Zeitschiff. You know, then you got, and then it got crazy. You had Walter uh, Wegmuller, uh, he had the tarot box set with had all the cosmic jokers playing on it. It's just, it's pure insanity. Very important albums, you know. Yeah, really, you know, that's the thing. I mean, the thing about Manuel, yeah, he just didn't. He for those who know, you know, that's the thing. You know, he he was the man, but he probably didn't get as much recognition um, as as he should have. He was not a household name like a. No, like, he wasn't. You know, yeah. I think there's a lot of um, a lot of other players who maybe popped up in similar musical styles who have a lot more notoriety than he ever did. And uh, I, I'm sitting here while we were talking, I'm thinking, well, how do we describe his style of playing? And it's hard to say because his style always seemed to kind of change and morph. Whereas, you know, early on, you could say, all right, you know, if you're a fan of, you know, the fiery psychedelic stuff like Jimi Hendrix early Frank Marino you'll love yeah. this stuff I think people who are into Steve Hillage will love some of this oh stuff. sure but yet it doesn't sound like any of them no the point of style yeah but like um yeah with Hillage when Hillage was doing um Rainbow Dome music green things like that you know there's there's sort of there's like a parallel you know not exactly you know doing this same you know maybe the basic universe uh different but you know, uh, distant cousins, let's say. Yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. like that first Ashra Temple album. That's pure like late sixties raw fiery psychedelia, without doubt. Yeah, like like yeah. guitar hero power trio type stuff. Yeah, really part of it. yeah. They were saying that I, I was reading um, that on Schwingungen. I think the first track saying he was influenced by Peter Green. You know, Flipper Mac. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't necessarily call any of the Ashwat Temple albums bluesy. I was know? just going to say, not really, no. no <laughs> but no. you know, but uh, you know, probably Peter Green, Peter Green was an influence on a lot of people. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he was, he was great. And uh, uh, I'm sorry that I'm sorry the guy's gone in seventy. You would have figured he could have given us some, could have given us more. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a little on the younger side, based on a lot of the other uh, old legends that we've been seeing leave of late, right? So um, it's sad. Yeah. We, we lost Edgar Froese, we lost Klaus Schultz, and now we lost Manuel Gotch. Yeah, yeah. Those were the those were the big, guys. Those are the big ones. Yeah, those were the big names. Yep. All a too young. Well, I mean, as I was, you know, I was just doing the the Kim Simmons tribute earlier from Savoy Brown. And it's like, uh, this is unfortunately what we're going to see a lot of over the next decade uh, or unless we're going to see a lot of our old favorites and our heroes and the legends are all going to start going one by one. Unfortunately, it's just it's the way Father Time works. And uh, I I just turned 63 and, you know, and, uh, you know, I put everything in perspective. I know that, like, you know, for me, when Keith, well, when Frank Zappa died, that would tremendous impact on me. And he was so young, you know, and he had cancer. When Emerson, Keith Emerson, when he died, I mean, it was like, oh, you know. Yeah. Again, I mean, you know, at his own hands. But then you see these other guys, they they die and you're, oh, they're in their 70s. And you think now, you know, 70 is is the new, you know, is, is the new 60, right? At least I keep, I keep saying that, right? That's so, what they tell us, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, I keep, you know, I try to convince myself that. So, you know. And then you know, but there's no justice. Manuel Gotching is, is is dead at seventy, and Keith Richards is still around. I mean, is is that fair? That's not fair. I've I've said it a million times. Keith will outlive all of us. I think the guy put so much shit into his body all those years. Probably overdosed how many times, and he's still <laughs> kicking. He's like a New York City cockroach. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. and he's got a smile on his face, and he's like, you know. It's, well, that's that's the way life is, unfortunately. Yeah, I, it, um, but it is true, and it's it's kind of sad that a lot of our heroes they're going to slowly disappear. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then uh, yeah, you dread the day, but it it, just, it comes right, and uh, yeah, what are you going to do? So, well, there you have it, everybody. A little tribute to the music and career of Manuel Gotching, who passed away on December fourth, twenty twenty two, at the age of seventy. Uh, I would recommend, Ken, would would you recommend three albums that they should go check out immediately if they're not familiar with his first movie? album, without question. Uh, Inventions for Electric Guitar, absolutely. Um, if you want to go in a slightly different direction, E2, E4, because, again, it is very important. And, and as you listen to it, I kind of revisited it before. It's got that sequencing, and it's got some really interesting guitar. It's, it's a little ambient in spots, but uh, that's great. He, you could if you go into if you stumble into a store and you come across any Ashra Temple album, pick it up. You'll find some maybe not seven up, but uh, <laughs> 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 no, that's you know. But uh, seriously, join in if you can find them. You know we have some of them in stock, but you can find them. You know they're out there. Um, Man- Manuel apparently got the rights back to his catalog or retained the rights, so um, they were all reissued on CD. And they've been doing the vinyl reissues. Also, if you're if you're so disposed, they're all in print. And and with him passing, one would assume that they'll be prominently available. The, you know, the label and the distributors are going to be pumping them out. Well, for sure. Yeah. After this, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. you know, head on over to lasercd.com and uh, see what Ken's got in stock. I know I, I bought yeah. some stuff from you in recent months and whatever. So uh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, if you got to have one, go for the first one. It's the all time classic. But yeah, you, you can't go wrong with just about anything. You'll want more after that, trust me. Absolutely, without yeah. question. Yeah, so, sure. So, cool. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. All together, all the damn time. Rest in peace, Manuel Gotching, age of 70, has left us. Uh, but the music, as we always say, we'll live on forever. For Ken Golden, I'm Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks.